so hello friends welcome to godox india and nikita distributors for the live on essentials or minimal lighting for wedding photography so let's wait for people to join so now uh, it's two more minutes to go so let's wait for it So hello friends, so how many of you are there just waiting for you? So if there are enough number of people, I think we can uh, start the live. Yeah, there is video Anish, uh, you had to wait for that. So I'm streaming it. So hope you're, you'll be getting in a while. So there's a poll option where you can uh, really go and uh, give your uh, options like uh, if you are somebody who likes to hear me in Tamil you can ask me in Tamil I can speak both English and Tamil with equal ease so hi Muttu sir hi Saravanan Srela I like to know about studio lighting from Godox equipment okay so uh, that could be at the final question answer session I will be doing the last 15 minutes uh, this presentation will be on minimal equipments, so I'll be talking about that, Shravan. So, are you able to see me? Am I audible? I'd like to get a feedback. So, I'll be waiting for two more minutes for more people to come and join. Okay, it's clear. Okay, thank you Om Prakash. So, let me go on live then. Both video and audio are good. Okay, fine, great. Thank you, thank you, thank you Swaraj. Thank you Sunil. So, Ish and uh, Ranjit, both of you are able to hear me properly. I just want to have a confirmation. So it's 11 to, so probably in another minute, uh, we can start going with the uh, uh, main presentation. Hi Madhuri, hi Sankar, Sankar, hi Anish.
Hi Kathleen, hi Malik. So it's 11.3, so we have waited for three minutes for uh, most of the guys. So let's go on live. Uh, Ranjit, I would ask your help uh, in answering certain questions about equipment. Please free, feel free to answer because there are a lot of comments coming up. So uh, something on equipment, model numbers and things like that. Uh, Ranjit Jayakumar is a product expert on Godox uh, India. Uh, who is working in Chennai so he'll be helping you so hope all of you are able to follow English if there's anybody who wants me to talk in uh, Tamil please feel free to communicate with me I'll be happy to uh, explain in Tamil as well so let's go to the presentation so it's a minimal lighting setup for wedding photography So before getting into lighting, let's uh, look into the lighting scenarios. So in weddings, what are the scenarios you generally experience? So say the main wedding photography, which happens in a mandapam or a wedding hall, a wedding can happen in a temple, it can happen in an outdoor arena or a destination wedding sort of, something like a sangeet, something like a dance and cocktail party, it could be couple shoots, it, it could be shooting the couple within the we wedding venue, it could be reception, it could be so on, right? So uh, in different situations, how will you handle the lighting, okay? So that's the thing we are going to look at. So again, coming to the scenarios, uh, these are the scenarios. I have listed it on uh, the screen now. So it's outdoor couple shoots, bride and groom portraits on the location, getting ready shots, cocktail and dance floor events, outdoor weddings, weddings at hotels and halls, small events at home, reception at wedding halls and so on. So let's look into the first scenario. Uh, but before going to the first scenario, one thing which we often do while lighting is portrait is one of the key things, right? You shoot portraits of bride, grooms, bride, groom together as a couple. You might shoot uh, uh, portraits of other guests. So let's look into the basic uh, portrait light styles. Okay. See, these things are very important because often you, uh, it's not, uh, brides are not models. Grooms are not models. You often see people who are short, tall, fat people, people who are thin, anything. So round face is probably somebody who is a little plump and old face is somebody who has a little bit of narrow face. So how will you do the lighting? Okay, there are two types of lighting. Uh, uh, there are many types of lighting. Okay, broad and short light is a demo I have given in this picture. On the left side, it's a short lighting. That means the shorter side of the face, which is away from the camera, is get, away from the key light is getting lit. Okay, and the broad lighting where the major portion of the face is getting lit. So see, the, the whole idea is like this. Okay, the definition of broad and short lighting is little different. It's towards the camera and things like that. But the point is, uh, if you are using a broad lighting, then it's going to show the major portion of the face. So for whom you'll do a broad lighting? For somebody who has a narrow face, you want to show the face a little bigger, you go for broad lighting. So for somebody who is already fat, you want to make the face narrow, then cover a major part of the face with shadow and you go for a short lighting. Next is Rembrandt. Rembrandt lighting is one of the most popular lightings. Okay, it's very simple. Your source of light is on one side a little topish okay at an angle towards the face so that the no shadow casts a triangle on the other side of the cheek if you see it will cast a triangle okay uh, it looks very beautiful on women even men so uh, it was used by the painter uh, Rembrandt and now it's been uh, used by photographers ever since people started doing portrait photography Rembrandt light was used so 
uh, if you don't have a fill it will be a picture like this where the other side of the face is totally dark so as much as you want the black portion to be a little fill you can add a bounce or you sometimes you can add a, another light too so butterfly lighting is very simple i think uh, most of the bridal shots lot of people the top shots and everything people use butterfly light it the light should be right above the nose so below the nose it will cast a small shadow like a butterfly so that's why it's called a butterfly lighting it looks really pleasing on brides so any doubts on this so far any questions on this you can ask so so i don't see much questions coming so i'll go to the next thing into the lighting scenarios so meanwhile uh, any comments are coming up okay so next let's go to the first thing outdoor couple shoot i think uh, the moment you think about lighting for weddings i think most of the people think about something called the outdoor couple shoots i think uh, things have lot improved after uh, godox lights have come because a lot of people are able to buy affordable lights okay like the ad200 ad600 what not previously it used to be a very expensive deal buying uh, uh, battery operated lights and things like that nowadays uh, I, thanks to godox they have made it uh, really affordable so let's talk about uh, outdoor video is not clear is is the video clear for everyone for what type of face is butterfly better shri krishna joshi see i think a butterfly works for people who have a nice sculpted face okay so as if you are if you are going for a person with a fatter face and things like that try to give more shadow go for something like a short lighting and things like that it works better or even rembrandt works better so see it's the idea is about uh, if the person is fat then you have to have more shadows so that's the thing okay uh, so hope the video is clear somebody says the video is not clear so uh, maybe it's because of your bandwidth try connecting to your faster internet source so if you are on 4g connect to your uh, broadband so what is the minimal lights okay coming to that point okay for outdoor shoot obviously Uh, you need a trigger i use a xpro o because i use panasonic cameras okay uh, if you are uh, going alone you definitely need a stand even if you are going with assistant please use a stand and i would recommend a boom stand like this because holding a lights over a long period of time is really painful some of the lights are little heavy something like if you take something like ad600 on it's little heavy and uh, even if say ad200 once you put a modifier like this uh with wind load and everything it's little painful so always use a stand so most of the time i just go with one ad200 okay at times i have uh, this uh, filter kit okay ranjit you can give what is the model for uh, this kind of filter kit and for ro- round lights uh, what will be the model number all those things you can give in the chat and i always use this modifier so what's behind me uh, i'll show you that so so if you see i have a, a modifier behind me it's a 80 cm octa with a grid so these things are very important so what i do is i have a s bracket okay inside the s bracket i inside uh, i insert my ad200 okay it's very small so i can just insert into the s bracket and i can start using it so uh, most the lot of people who have asked me uh, telling in bright sunlight how do you fight sunlight with ad200 no you cannot fight really bright sunlight using a ad200 for that you have something called ad600 ad600 pro 
now 80200 is also coming i don't know when it's getting launched probably uh, our godox experts will help on that so why use only 8200 because one it is easy to carry in a bag i just take a small vanguard bag like this one camera two lenses and that's all one flash okay a flash like a godox v1 okay uh, and i can put the 8600 8200 somewhere in the bag and just go off okay so, so if a uh, assistant is coming i if most of the times i go in a car if i don't have a car also i definitely have a tripod i can even put this 8200 8200 a tripod it has a tripod mount too so there are other uh, ways of fixing modifiers when you put it on a tripod uh, i use that so uh that's about it but one thing is when you use 8200 and you are shooting outdoors make sure you shoot early in the morning or late in the evening once the sun rises up say after 7 30 or 8 o'clock when the sun is really bright it is very very difficult to fight the sun so during sunrise and when the sun is about to set 86 8200 works and it works everywhere wherever there is a shadow where, the, where this foliage and shadow you can use a 8200 and i prefer lighting like that i don't prefer to light some somebody and take outdoor shoots when the sun is really high high up in the uh, in the sky and it casts very bad shadows under your eyes so i never do that so this is the minimal equipment i use for my outdoor couple shoots so uh deepesh you can see my number in my facebook profile itself so uh, i think ranjit is giving the model numbers so pranav has a question difference in lights in uh, different modifiers i'll i'll give a very very simple tip okay the larger the modifier and the closer the mod the light is to the person the softer it is the smaller the modifier and the larger the distance this from the subject the light will be harder for example a beauty dish will have a harder light than a octa a parabolic uh, modifier will have a softer light than a octa okay so that is these are the things you should remember and in case of a parabolic light like a p120l you can hit light at the lo longer distance and still make sure the light is softer godox v860 mark ii is an amazing flash for wedding photography grids i'll come to it later so the modifier i use is right behind me you can see that for my couple shoots it's right behind me this is the one i use so this is it so let me go go into the lighting scenarios now so in this scenario uh, the situation based settings are extremely important like the time of the day like I said uh, it's better to shoot early in the morning or late in the evening so direction you make uh, you make uh, make the couple phase if it's really early in the morning the sun is just rising and the orange light is coming in the background you can use that light as the rim light or hair light and fill some light in the face so that you get a beautiful portrait okay so make use of sun properly say it's about 7 30 and things like, like things like that it's already 8 the sun is uh, is little bit powerful you are not able to compensate with a 8200 then make the couple face the sun itself okay so sun will be helping you and wherever there's a shadow you can fill with 8200 or that time you make it ulta you can use 8200 as the rim light or hair light so add a gel like a orange gel or something like that to still have a early morning effect okay so distance of flash from the subject is extremely important okay once the flash moves farther and farther uh, the light falls exponentially okay one feet to two feet uh, there will be a big difference uh, four feet to eight feet it will be a huge difference okay so try to have the light as as close as possible that's why i'm recommending the boom po, boom 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 stands where you can uh, bring the light as close as possible without obstructing the camera view 
HS is very important if you are using shallow depth of field lenses say you are shooting with the 85 1.4 and you, you cannot move the shutter above 250 right so that time to the ambient light cannot be overexposed so that time you have to use high speed sync so all the godox battery operated lights like 8200 8400 8600 they all have high speed sync in them so you can make use of them you can go up to 1 by 8000 i have done certain shots in 1 by 8000 so hard light and soft light i already discussed and very very important to discuss with the uh, your customers your couple on the costume the color of costume all these things are very important you should uh, you should actually have a good idea on where you are going to do a couple shoot uh, depending on that background and everything you can choose a nice color for example you are say it's a good place where you can easily get a nice blue sky with clouds and all that and you you are having the couple for a couple to pose against the clouds and blue sky you can ask the bride to wear something like a red color it will really stand out so I'm just giving some examples okay so depth of field you always need not go with shallow depth of field okay if there is there is something interesting in the background which will add to the couple's uh, expression the couple posing and all that please show it in focus it still works it's the way of uh, uh, actually composing it so art of posing yeah all of your wedding uh, photographers i think listening here so you must be knowing uh, if you are if you are new to this field and uh, if you are not little sure about it the lot of resources on the net on art of posing have a uh, ready reference with some 20 poses that way you can finish it off quickly okay so the way people balance the way they keep the legs is very very important uh, any person cannot pose if they are in a if they are not balanced properly they should be able to balance their own weight properly if people cannot be in a particular pose comfortably you will not get a good picture make sure your couple your bride everybody is in a comfortable position so these are some of shots in this particular shot it was uh, sun was rising early in the morning so that i used as a backlight on the hair so in the front it was filled with a strobe like a ad 200 so this is this is how it was filled sun was in the back uh, it was lighting the hair and in the front i filled with the light so in this case again the sun was in the back this was somewhere in the evening around 4 30 so one of one of my friends helped me pv subramaniam he helped me with the light so the light was filled from the front uh, the strobe was filled from the front and the sunlight from was from the back this is not actually sun whatever you see on the right i tend to add certain effects in post processing to make the picture look better so the choice of color you know see in this particular case the this is what they had but uh, i had uh, i asked them for a lot of costumes so this is this is the costume they wore and came uh, at that time within the choices they had i felt this particular color was going well with this kind of a background in air cut it's so one of my friends i shot her in uh, this was in a karikudi bungalow one light 8200 with the soft box behind me uh, actually i saw natural light coming this way so natural light is always an inspiration so when you have natural light use natural light don't always think that you have a you have to use a flash because you have a flash it is not like that when you feel when there is natural light use natural light so when it came in the light was actually falling like this by the time she came be, she was ready and she came and sat here that light was gone so what i did was i simulated that light using my ad200 so a lot of time that works so uh, any questions which are coming up sir aapka naam kya hai uh, i am kartik sir Nitesh, I am Karthik. So, Rohan Gandhi, yes, the inverse square law will come in use. So, uh, the farther the light, uh, you take the light, the fall will be at least uh, 
the square of it say if you take uh, by uh, two units of distance okay the light will fall fall by four times okay that's the inverse square law it's nice i mean so many people uh, that's great uh, fashion shoot equipment i'll come back to you so uh, grids i have to answer right i'll answer that okay so coming back to the presentation so again see this is a particular picture i added a lot of grains here uh, it was a restaurant in a resort so i was on the other side there is a glass window okay and one of my friends went inside and lit so though it was glass window everything uh, that my expro trigger was able to trigger the light so sometimes you have to use this wireless trigger at your advantage so the light lighting can happen somewhere and you can stand somewhere it's actually totally inaccessible okay there's a big glass window which cannot be opened or closed okay it's a sealed glass thing and uh, there was some uh, bougainvillea plants outside and that reflection was cast on the glass so overall the whole thing uh, looked interesting and i shot it so one more thing when you go to a place like this always think about what happens when you underexpose the background sometimes the lights and all that will come beautifully and you can light the subject so fix the ambient exposure and then fix the flash exposure that will be the easiest way to go so don't keep alternating you'll be wasting a lot of time then so this again happened in a similar way i fixed the amb ambient exposure and then uh, fill the front with light it should be about 6:45 in the evening when i shot this picture in the resort so next let's go to bride and groom portrait on the location okay a lot of times uh, what happens is okay 280 200s or 180 400 see there is a bracket where you can fix 280 200s and get the output of uh, 400 or use a 400 okay uh, i like using 280 200s because okay a lot of time what you need is 80 200 it is lighter simpler to use and things like that and say you need two lights <coughs> so you have 280 200 and use one as the key light one as the fill and things like that so i would say 280 200s but if you are uh, if you are in a situation where the backlight is heavy uh, and things like that uh, then it's difficult you have to go for a 80 400 so again for bride and groom portraits on the location so what are the minimal lights and mod you, mods you use on the location as in what i mean is uh, mandapams okay so uh, in case of mandapams okay what you don't need so much of light okay L lot of times even a small flash like this will do the reason is because inside a mandapam you need not actually fight sunlight backlight or something like that a small uh, light like this on uh, bra bracket s bracket like s2 or v1 or a s1 bracket with uh, wait this on uh, bra bracket s bracket like s2 or v1 or so this kind of a modifier will do uh, this is actually a 60 centimeter modifier okay i can easily fold it and keep it into a small bag okay so this works a lot of times say in a lot of uh, uh, times when i'm traveling on air and things like that where i cannot take the umbrella uh, the this kind of a modifier i take this and still make sure i get good light so that modifier can be used but the quality always comes in a nice larger modifier so 
light i would say a speed light is more than sufficient but if you have any toner why not use it so that's the one solution you have so you, there is there's an option here you can use that as much as possible try to use the bulb modifier into round modifiers like this which will give a very uniform light so situation based setting uh, uh, in this case make the best use of the location go throughout the mandapam and see what are the interesting backgrounds interesting uh, props lights everything you get okay uh, that can get better pictures for you that's very important very importantly fix the time with the bride and groom it's very very important lot of times uh, we uh, tend to waste a lot of time uh, waiting for the bride and groom make sure that coordination is really right okay make it really short in in the wedding space in the wedding spot the events will be happening one by one okay don't take a lot of time even if you take some 10 pictures tuck 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 finish and go off okay the client will be also comfortable they'll be happy so that's important and if you have a lot of time you can use gels and gobos cast colors and patterns on the wall okay there are a lot of modifiers uh, people sell okay so ranjit probably you can give details on that so uh, with that you can actually create a different atmosphere altogether but i would say look first into what is there in the location make best use of it and then come to all of this and you can also use stuff like this kind of lights okay this kind of lights really help there are lot of uh, lot of people actually uh, what happens is wait something wrong here uh, wait so a lot of people actually like this bouquet so you can take this kind of lights and add bouquet in the background so that works so if your uh, your place is really looking bad you have to add some kind of interest and get good portraits add bouquet in the background use high speed sync reduce the uh, increase the shutter speed so that the background is underexposed so you totally cut the background add some uh this kind of a prop in the front or back and uh, make some interesting pictures of the out of that finally it's what about what the client likes so if the client likes something do for them so that is very important so time is about 11:30 i think i had to little rush so again the costume is important look into texture have a list of posing references uh, and most importantly when you are shooting pictures uh, inside the mandapam make sure you uh, take pictures with the close friend probably their mom or sister or close friends are doing makeup for the bride they'll also get involved all those candid moments are very important it's not just about the bride and groom wedding is not about just bride and groom it's very important to uh, get all these details people are going to love that as uh, customers so let me go through the questions okay yeah max pier is fine but then uh, the problem is max pier is such a small modifier okay it's not going to give a really soft light so i would always say if you are uh, if you are really on constraints of size and weight use something like this this will work better okay you can you can get a softer light but uh, of course such small modifiers can really help you in some critical situations so i normally prefer a larger modifier so hard light or soft light it depends on the situation what i want to uh, show it's a creative decision i uh, really like to use both uh, raj hard light and 
uh, Softlight, really nice, happy to see Raj here. So he has done a lot of couple shots. Probably you have to look into his portfolio, click bugs. So he has probably used all types of lights. <laughs> and he's a Arden Godox user. Raj Kumar Jeevaraj who is commenting right now. So that's one thing. So some of the possible lights. Okay, it's essentially natural light. Okay, I didn't use any strobe here. Okay, you can still shoot pictures like this. It's not always strobes. You use strobes wherever is required. Wherever you have natural light, make use of it. Get creative. So in this particular situation, the background was awful. Okay, we just added some interest using that using those serial lights and added a Godox AD200 in the front. That's all I did to get this post portrait. Similar here. So getting ready shots. So coming to getting ready shots, what are the minimal lighting equipments? You, of course, the trigger and uh, stand. And most of the time, I'm telling you, your speed light is more than sufficient for getting ready shots. So while while the makeup artist does this hair spray and all, add try to add a backlight. You need not always show everything clearly. So if you add a backlight, that could give a very interesting shot. Okay, so that's something I wanted to point out. So don't spend forever inside the makeup room of the bride. Okay, get a few shots and come out. That is not all you need. Okay, the, the, while the bread is getting ready, the food is getting ready, okay, the hall is getting ready, people are going to decorate the hall, involve all of those people, okay, every getting ready is important, okay, the groom getting ready is important, so try to cover it all, present a good story, okay, uh, by having 100 shots of getting ready, you are not going to do anything, even the client is not going to read it, so spend minimal time, avoid cliched shots like the bright facing up from the top shooting and things like that take something different if you, every room is different i'm telling you use mirrors use reflections keep it very creative um, give something very unique okay so that's what i would say and most of the time for getting ready shots um, yeah as somebody said you can use uh, max peers okay uh, with grids so this can be used and yeah, somebody was asking when to use grids. Okay, in getting ready shots, grids could be uh, coming very handy to uh, point light to a particular source. What grids essentially do is they prevent the light from spreading. If you use small grids in front of uh, AD200, then the light won't spread. So there are different grids. Okay, the smaller the grids, the light won't spread at all. The narrow is the way the light falls okay so hair light and all that if the, if you don't want the light to spread into the face and things like that then you can use grids so that's the purpose of grids so let me look into some of the questions probably people have asked so so v1 setup see v1 is a speed light okay uh, the only thing is if you have to mount v1 with a modifier you have to use a s2 bracket Ranjit, you can give a link to S2 bracket because a lot of people buy a V1, uh, they get confused with the bracket they should buy. So, Tanmoy Sharma, when to use flash head and when to use barbell? Okay, it's a very good question. Uh, the, the flash head is about 35 mm in uh, field of view, okay, the way it spreads. Okay, when you want a pointed light, when you are using modifiers like grids, things like that, mag mods and things like that, use that. Okay, when you need uniform light, okay, you, like the light should spread uniform within the beauty dish or an octa, use a bulb. Okay, so that's the way it is. And oh, any more question? What is the HSS right exposure outdoor ambient light or what? Anand, I didn't get your question. Can you? Uh, repeat your question please so okay Yuvraj 
Snoot, okay, I don't really use a Snoot for wedding photography, but what prevents you from using a Snoot? Instead of a grid, you can use a Snoot. Both grids and Snoots are used for narrowing the light, okay. So, depending on your purpose, you can use them. I mean, uh, don't be really strict about, okay, this is what you use because you said that lighting is a creative thing. People can have their own combinations and come up with uh, multiple, uh, okay, you never know, it's a creative thing. Uh, have you used AD400 and AD600 FS? Can you explain why you chose them? Uh, I have used AD600 a lot of times. When I'm using huge modifiers like P120L and things like that, you need more light. So I, I go with the AD600. When you want to uh, light against a, a bright background or uh, on uh, on day, say midday, say 11 o'clock and all that, then you need a AD, AD600. But for wedding, I generally don't prefer that. I prefer to call couple in the mornings and evenings so that I can finish off the same thing with the smaller lighting setup Madhuri. So any more questions? Uh, what is the difference between bounce umbrella, soft box, which one is better for wedding reception? I would say for a wedding reception go with a standard umbrella diffuser. It's good. Okay. It's anyway you are going to spread the light. Spreading the light is what is required in a reception. So go with the umbrella. So, what do you prefer, soft light, hard light? Yeah, I think I answered. Okay, reception, yeah, I'll come back to that. Large stages, okay, those were the questions. For baby shoot, yeah, you can happily use AD200. See, modifiers are something you choose uh, depending on what you want, okay. If you need for baby and things like that, I generally prefer a softer light. So I use a bigger modifier and bring the light closer. So that's the way it works. And a lot of times natural light works and I tend to shoot in natural light with babies. So, and I say, keep it candid, unique angles. Too many people need not shoot. If you have three photographers in the team, it's not necessary that all three have to shoot the getting ready give time for your cinematic videographer give time for a traditional videographer all of them should shoot so it's very important so we cannot crowd and make uh, those things and godox has a ring light makes make use of that lot of uh, makeup artists will be bringing a ring light and with ring light you can get beautiful portrait so this is one such example using a ring light so for cocktail and dance floor events, what I use, I generally go with the AD200, give it to uh, another person, a, a fellow photographer or assistant with a grid, okay, sometimes with a gel. Uh, and I ask, ask him to go around and uh, uh, hit the light at different angles on people who are dancing. So maybe I shoot uh, very few pictures, but get very good expressions and come out. There's no point filling an entire 64 GB card with dances, okay? You need the best of the expression, the most important people like the bridegroom, their friends and the close family. So that is what you need. And rest of the pictures, you know how to take. So in cocktail and events, I'm telling you, don't just go with a DJ light. Use a flash, make creative use of it. Sometimes if you have two flashes, use one flash uh, in, a, uh, in, in this kind of a head and another flash with uh, color gel, those things can uh, bring really interesting results. If you want uh, more picture references for uh, this kind of uh, atmosphere, refer to Two Man Studios pictures. They do a lot of uh, pictures where using a flash, using gels and all that, and they bring really interesting stuff. So I think you have to do that. So this I told, so use an assistant, it's very important, get good expressions, those are very, very important. So keep it candid, don't kill ambient light, don't overpower the flash and kill ambient light. Those colors in the DJ, light flow, uh, DJ lights and la dance floor lights are very important. So that's about it. So outdoor weddings and events, okay. This is one area which is a little bit challenging most of the times. You should have a thorough idea on how the location looks like. Okay, 
so most of times uh, because in indian weddings they have a thing like the bride and groom has to face the east and and if it happens in the morning it's good because the sun will be falling on them no challenges but if it's a beach wedding on things like that the backlight could be really heavy at the time please plan your lights sometimes your minimal lights sometimes may not work okay you may need a heavy light so you have to decide based on that but if they are if it's early in the morning say 7:38 and things like that and um, the light is falling sunlight is falling on them probably couple of ad 200s to fill will be great sometimes even a speed light will be good enough so such times you can use this ak r12 on v1 for a nice bonds so be really aware of the direction of light that's very important you cannot bleach the background if you bleach the background the pictures are going to look really bad if there is backlight you have to keep, uh, you have to be really careful even some of the cameras hunt in auto focus so uh, if it is going to be real uh, backlight then probably you you should even go and discuss with the client on changing the direction of stage okay because fighting backlight continuously could be really difficult and you cannot fire continue your light continuously in uh, one is to one in hss and things like that the light is going to heat up so do, don't do that be careful about that so do not keep fighting the sun okay at a point either you lose or the flash will lose so when you in such daylight conditions so if you want to shoot shallow depth of field then hss is really helpful right because uh, if you are in an aperture like 1.2 or 1.4 and you are shooting the event then you have your shutter speed has to go high so that time hss really comes useful so when you are using hss in very high shutter speeds okay i would say don't completely go with your on camera flash use ad200 okay so ad200 like that has worked better for me in a lot of cases so any questions coming let me see so shri krishna joshi two man two man studios okay it's a, it's a wedding photographer okay can uh, probably search raj if you are still there just uh, give a link to two man studios uh ad 200 round flash head I, I i have not used for me the bulb and this head uh, is i'm i'm more more than happy so i use that hi venkat nice to see you how to use camera flash like when you are in on the move in outdoor see on the move outdoor on camera flash it's very difficult to use if the light is heavy so you might have to at the best you can use a bounce card and use but i would prefer you going with external light like ad 200 that's better uh, let me be very simple about it so weddings in hotels okay uh, see weddings in hotels okay most of time you have the sun guns and everything lighting up the stage so i normally have a, a light like this on my camera just to fill the shadows see at times uh, if uh, if the backlight is really heavy and all all that i also use a ad 200 in tandem and please note you can also fire a ad 200 from your godox v1 or v860 mark 2 so you can still use a flash and still be firing your ad 200 a uh, lot of people miss out on that they don't think like that way you always need a trigger you this particular uh, flash will also act as a master so that is something you need to consider so when it comes to uh, mandapams hotels and places like that it always works okay so you need most of times uh, on camera flash will be more than sufficient in wedding halls hotels and places like that so in hotels you may not like the changing color leds these days it's becoming a a thing with the dec decorators red green everything will be changing one it disturbs the video it it sometimes green color and all it casts a very 
bad light on the face so try to keep it at one color and then work on your light and sometimes the lighting in the background is really uh, bright make sure your ambient light exposure is little let at least uh, a quarter stop lesser and then fill your foreground with light at least zero at zero exposure you cannot over expose the background so if you are in doubt use a camera flash so those are things to uh, uh, bear in mind and when it comes to posing don't pose at all a wedding event is a wedding event okay you need to be as candid as possible and uh, this is something i want to tell okay this is apart from lighting okay when you are shooting weddings okay it's not necessary that you have to always use a 7200 lens and do the candids go as close as possible use a 35 mm lens use a 28 mm lens go close you'll capture a lot of better stories you'll get lot of nice pictures okay capturing expressions is very important your client is going to love it okay do that give give the client a surprise okay that's very important so shoot pictures like this okay it's a village wedding i shot couple of months ago okay um, it's basically uh, uh, fireworks okay rockets okay uh, in village weddings down south somewhere near uh, tirunelveli and all these places this fireworks is mandatory so this guy was doing this. normally people i never seen people shooting that so i found him interesting so i shot a few pictures of him launching this rockets from the street so all these things happen on the go you it's very difficult to ask for a repeat even if you, if you ask for a repeat you won't get the same expression back so this is one of my favorite photographs i shot off late so she is amazing dancer actually that her sangeet was amazing so we shot a lot of dance pictures too so this was in a hotel so light was coming from the other side i didn't even use a flash nothing um, i just shot it uh, though i had a flash on my camera i switched it off certain times please remember to switch off the flash don't kill natural light ultimately the idea is to get a good light not to use it's not about using a flash using a daylight you have to get good images so don't miss these moments again one of my favorites so like i said go really close i shot this using a 35 mm lens so never think you you should only be shooting at a distance this kind of experience once you keep going close and uh, once you keep shooting like that people will get used to it so adukapra vandu kandukka matanga so after that they don't mind okay so then you start getting good candid shots okay this was just before shooting their on location portraits so i was just setting up the lights my assistant was setting up the lights uh, so she was getting ready uh, fixing her uh, uh, jimiki and he was combing his the groom was combing his hair so don't miss all these shots okay finally when you deliver the pictures all these pictures become interesting and weddings don't uh, happen without small events at home all you need is a on camera flash most of the times so unless it's a event like a haldi or something like that where the event goes on forever then put ad 200 on a stand with a umbrella it works great a lot of times i love uh, using lights without cables okay i love using ad 2 ad 200 or ad 600 whatever lights okay i normally go, don't go beyond ad 200 so for me this is a light i resort to all the times keeping it minimal weightless okay so i i just take the light put it on a stand with an umbrella and keep shooting it's it's a car, it's a very free experience see sometimes you if you keep on shooting uh, uh, this the speed lights sometimes you know like uh, you, can, see, you i i I'd always tend to use it at maximum 1/8 of uh, output or 1/16th of the output if it goes uh, beyond that i normally use a uh, ad 200 because there's no point in getting your flash overheated don't stress your flash okay your flash should not be stressed 
always operate at see today you have uh, cameras going to higher isos okay even if you are going to shoot at 1600 iso you are going to get a clean picture in most of the cameras available today so why stress the flash sometimes keep the light minimum so that your recharge time is lesser you can keep on shooting and you will not miss a particular scene because the light is recharging so i have some questions i guess what is the advantages of hss any harm to use flash continuously yeah if you use flash continuously at higher output especially uh, a smaller uh, speed light like this it can get overheated it could show overheat warning and after that you will be able to only shoot slowly it will the flash will take a longer time to recharge so you should be aware of those things so so the moment you come to such situations it's better to use a bigger flash like 8200 which uh, in the, in this kind of flashes it won't happen like that ttl for indoor venues okay madri ttl is something the flash judges okay any equipment flash camera or any equipment it has its intelligence but there is a limit to the artificial intelligence it has okay there is nothing like choosing a manual uh, output and using it i use manual most of the times okay say you know the ceiling height you you, you are aware of uh, your situation uh, how uh, to, how how far is the ceiling from your flash and things like that fix the output and keep using it okay you will get a constant output even while post processing it will become a less of a work while doing it and things like that so uh it works like that okay so uh, choose manual as much as possible but if you are in a situation where your environment keeps changing your bounds distance everything keeps changing then go for a ttl and later you can correct the exposure while post processing your raw files so that's the uh, answer hope i answered you madri so any questions shri krishna joshi do you use awb or how do you set the white balance setting the white balance is really important a flash white balance is almost equal to daylight white balance it should be around 5500 kelvin you can refer to your manual for the right i use 5500 kelvin for flash okay so if there is lot of uh, art, uh, other ambient light like a uh, uh, tube light leds and things like that so you might have to go to some say 4800 4600 like that and in typical wedding situation when there are lot of uh, uh, this sun guns with yellow light uh, i generally try with, even with a flash i try keeping the uh, white balance somewhere around 3800 or 3000 4000 it depends on your exposure okay how much of ambient light and how much of flash what is the ratio so i would say uh, when you are in a particular situation say if you are shooting a reception and all the sh shots are going to be the same okay uh, go to kelvin keep changing the kelvin un un until you achieve a sweet spot so i think that is very very important uh, billu velu venkat has asked about indoors what was the question can you repeat billu velu uh, v860 mark to why why not i mean it's uh, i think throughout india people use for weddings thank you gopi kiran narayan how to calculate the flash output power easily when you mix flash with ambient lights see the right way the technical way will be used will be to use a flash meter and uh, ambient light light metering and things like that i don't want to complicate it kiran so i would say it's a trial and an error experience okay so the mix of flash uh, with ambient light uh, you find it okay you have to give exposure probably in a physical face to face workshop i'll be able to demonstrate in a much better way it's very difficult to explain okay to be very simple i would say first fix the ambient light exposure okay either at zero or slightly at minus if you want uh, if you are shooting a portrait if you want it darker then make it darker if you want it as it is then uh, keep it as it is so fix the ambient exposure 
then switch on the flash keep on increasing the output until you get a particular fill okay so that probably would be the process okay that's the process i adopt uh, but most of the times i go by experience i know with this light with this light how much it would be so i just go by experience in one or two trials i get it so as you keep shooting it will it will come to you okay that's what i would say but that technical workflow i explain hope you are satisfied with that let me know if you're not satisfied i'll answer you once again using ad 8200 pro what is the difference between rectangular fresnel head and a barbell see fresnel uh, fresnel head is more uh, kind of a focusing targeted light okay it's about it's almost like a 35 mm lens say that will be the way the light spreads okay so but though the light spreads at 35 mm still uh, if the light is very close to the output uh, the diffuser say okay the, your 35 mm is going to come out it's not going to hit within the walls of the reflector inside the modifier get diffused and come out if you use a round head the light spreads very uniformly okay so that would be the main difference i would say so how to use ad 200 bulb okay uh, i just explained it i think uh, you can use ad 200 in ttl mode see t using ttl uh, or manual uh, is basically a choice you take okay it's not something uh, but i would say go with a manual if you know if you are very thorough with the exposure you are you 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 are able to un understand what the exposure situation is like go with a manual exposure you will never fail your exposures will be uniform in ttl it the the flash and the ca camera calculates every time so there will be slight variations to avoid variations i would always ask you to go in manual mode but wherever there are situations wherein it's very difficult for you to calculate the light keeps on changing then please use a ttl always uh, use the features of cameras and lights wherever you are at a constraint wherever uh, you don't have time to change the settings okay you can put certain things in auto and change it later even white balance for that matter if you're not really sure uh, use auto white balance but make sure you are in raw raj what is your favorite mod modifier I don't have a favorite modifier Raj uh, for different situations I love different modifiers and that's the that's the real answer okay all these modifiers I'm showing is because in a wedding I have to uh, keep it small I, I travel light that's why I use it like this okay given the freedom I have all the choice of modifiers I'll keep using different modifiers every time for different outputs. For example, shooting a nice portrait of a bride uh, in a wedding hall, probably for a close-up, I would like a beauty dish. Okay, I would really love to have a beauty dish. Okay, so it it uh, it depends. So I think I'd like to have a variety of modifiers, but I don't have a luxury of that in weddings. So I use this one wherever i have to really really travel light when i take a car i use what is in the what you see in the background kiran kumar which is the best light in godox to use outdoors in harsh lighting conditions kiran i don't use uh, i don't do couple shoots in harsh lighting conditions as i said i either shoot early in the morning or late in the evening so i just go with ad 200 which is more than sufficient for me so if you need a little more light okay there's always a condition wherein the client comes a little late and things like that the light can go up you cannot sometimes you may not be in a position to say no so probably two ad uh, 200s in a bracket is something i would recommend if a 400 watts output is sufficient for you or if such situations keep on happening and if you are if you're always on a car i would say go with ad 600 pro I think AD600 Pro counters any situation uh, and um, I would actually love doing couple shoots with AD600 Pro and uh, P120L. 
So P120L is, uh, I think I really like that uh, modifier. So along with P P120L and, cup and uh, AD200, it will be great, but that's not a minimal lighting setup. So I don't want to cover this here. So the whole topic is about minimal light. So I keep it with AD200 and how to use AD200 effectively. So that's the thing. So Raj says AD600 Pro in bare bulb is his favorite. Yeah, I think it's an absolutely wonderful light. So thank you, Bidip Gogoi. So if I haven't answered any of your questions, there are so many comments. So uh, kindly uh, uh, let me know about it. Okay, please give the comment again so that I can uh, see that. Yeah. So I like to see some of the comments I haven't answered. Okay, it's a bit important because I might have missed some of the comments. I'm really sorry. So many comments were going on and I was switching between my camera, slideshow and things like that. So I could have uh, missed something. I'm sorry. So let me have a repeat of that. So this particular picture uh, this particular picture I am showing now is actually shot using two AD 200s okay it was a quick shoot I, I really had to bounce two AD 200s and shoot it so I normally don't light like that but uh, it shows how handy couple of AD 200s can be uh, while doing it I think one hour is almost going to be over so it was little extra because there was a lot of questions but it doesn't matter i think i'll take a little more extra time because so many so many of you are showing interest i'm really happy uh, to see so many of you coming here asking questions uh, so uh, if deepesh pudhiya purel uh, num my number you can uh, Deepesh, you can just uh, click on my Facebook profile. It's in the about section. Uh, you can take my number. My number is in public or just go to my website. I'll have you'll have your number. So what are the quick steps you take to achieve correct white balance in outdoors and indoors? See in outdoors it's simple. Okay, whatever is the white balance of sun. I use it and then fill it with flash and later corrections are done in post indoors. Uh, it's a uh, white balance. The Kelvin is in between the ambient light temperature and the flash temperature. What is that is something very difficult to say because it depends on exposures. Yeah, it's AD B2 bracket. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that uh, Shri Krishna. So in this particular picture, if you see, uh, I have only used one flash. Uh, there was a white wall on my left hand side. I just turned the flash head to the left and bounced on it. It was a, for a product shoot. I just wanted to show because even with the on camera flash, you can achieve amazing light if you bounce your light on right surfaces and decide on your lighting angles. So that, this is what it is. So reception at wedding halls, what is the lighting? My recommendation is very simple. Always have a uh, flash like this. It's always useful as with a bounce card, especially for traditional photographers. Okay, bride coming in, groom coming in, all of the shots you need to have. Once people are on the stage, okay, uh, if you're a traditional photographer who always works, uh, works on reception shoots and things like that, I would recommend a, SK 400 two numbers with an umbrella uh, when it comes to people who shoot once in a while smaller stages I think uh, this AD 200 on two umbrellas is a very comfortable option uh, I have done a couple of shoots with two AD 200 on umbrella and I have done a visual reception shoot it so happened one of the photographers could not come so I was a second candidate photographer I didn't have work on the reception day so what I did was I uh, I had a 8200, my friend had a 8200, 
we raise both ad 200s on two stands with umbrella it just worked fine okay instead of just shooting in iso 200 iso 400 i shot somewhere in iso 800000 and with the kind of cameras i use i use a lumix s1 uh, i can't really say a difference between iso 1600 and uh, iso 400 really so just go ahead and uh, make use of the facilities and strengths your camera and your lights have it's very important to explore that okay don't un, uh, 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 don't make your camera and lights underperform okay if your camera can perform at 1600 so make use of it okay put less stress on uh, the light and use smaller light like this with no cables running around and things like that your setup time is ma small the whole scene looks small just have two lights too many lights okay it's not going to help it's a huge stage yeah i can understand if it's a huge stage i would say um, fix the time with the hall uh, person try to see if you can fix your strobes somewhere hide it okay too many light stands in the front always looks a little bad okay even for photography and filmmaking for for us also it's going to come in between right so try to work something with your decorator so i think it should work so these are the most important points to remember let me uh, read this before i come to the questions so don't use direct flash on subject unless you are balancing hard light so this hard sunlight hitting and you want to balance it there's no point there in uh, uh, using bounds or uh, diffuser and things like that you can directly hit on the subject there's no problem okay don't continuously use your speed lights in full output your flash can uh, tend to get overheated and it may not perform when you really want a shot okay please be aware of that on triggers please use alkaline batteries 1.5 volts because your rechargeable batteries are 1.2 volts and in especially in uh, X-Pro triggers it might show a lower battery value because of that. Okay, so uh, use alkaline batteries in your X1T, X-Pro or X2T triggers. Okay, portraits have lights as close as possible. Okay, don't put lights at this distance. As the distance increases the light really really falls. Okay, so uh, bring as much close as possible to the extent your field of view is not blocked so make full use of your strobes at max sync speed before going to hss okay so put at iso 100 okay go to the cut the aperture as much as you can depending on the depth of field you want okay do all those things before going into uh, high speed sync because high speed sync will use more energy of the flash but the out light output will be as actually lesser okay to free stuff use high shutter speed combined with okay it works wonders okay so another light a special light i would recommend is lc 500 you can use both in uh, say uh, during weddings for video and for photography I think uh, my friends Raj and Kiran who are in the uh, who are in the live in comments now they have done a lot of work with LC 500 doing light painting in the background and filling flash in the foreground Raj if you could please uh, uh, share that picture from your workshop where you did a light painting with LC 500 in the background and the front it was filled with uh, flashlight so if possible share it i think uh, it really helps uh, all these people to understand uh, how it works so i would like to leave this thought with you a few unique shots matter more than gigabytes of pictures slow down think shoot unique pictures so that's important so scenarios for lc 500 madhuri see it can it's a very good continuous light you can use during during getting ready shots you can use for video if you say you have to do a 
uh, urgent interview with a bride or something like that you need immediate continuous lights you can immediately switch on put it on a stand and use so it's a very handy light it can emit different colors okay so that is uh, one good thing you can use for light painting okay so raj will share a picture now so uh, that will tell you how lc 500 can be used now suggestions for most appealing color combination like how you explain red dress for blue background see lighting there is something called lighting palettes you have to uh, understand what are contrasting colors for example uh, this kind of a yellow bottle against blue will be a contrasting thing so look at your color wheel on your photoshop or any editing application what is on the opposite sides is uh, basically contrasting color so if you put a person with yellow t-shirt on a blue background he is going to it will be very contrasting so there is something called harmony also okay put a person with yellow t-shirt on a slightly uh, more uh, slightly lighter yellow background okay that also helps sometimes harmony helps sometimes uh, this helps so that's the thing so i open up the session for questions so so this is my id at hornbell studios both on insta and youtube uh, please help me with your followers likes comments and subscription it really helps me i think it's a difficult time we are facing as photographers uh, so i think a uh, lot of people are out of work we are not able to go out even as a hobby if you want to go out and shoot we are not able to shoot so lot of uh, uh, things are happening like that so this is the best time i would say use it as much as possible St learn something new so lot of photographers are going live i think godox along with nikita distributors they'll be bringing a lot of experts more on such live sessions live workshops so it's an excellent opportunity to learn and i know there are some of experts who are on live today um, thank you guys thank you kiran raj there are so many other experts probably i didn't see who have come to my session today online thanks for that you can also use your time do your live sessions so some of the photographers newbies for them it might be helpful so you can always approach me for any help so in uh, ellame english la pesna for the benefit of my tamil followers i'm talking a few lines in tamil so na ellame english la pesiten nenikadinga innik session vande or repeat vande innik evening vande na vande tamil la vande na pandren ungalkaga na definitely vande na pandren okay ingala so tamil viewers need not get disappointed so idu da so uh, i'm throwing the session open for questions so you can ask questions so that uh, yeah i think i might have missed some questions i might have uh, i might might not have answered so let me have your questions so waiting for your questions guys so just waiting for it yeah just look at uh, rajkumar jeevaraj post he has post a couple of links okay uh, uh, those links uh, are where i sh i told about example right you creating a light painting as a background 
uh, with LC500 and then combining it with strobe light in the front. So the links are already posted. You can see that. So Malik Solanki is AD, AD, AD20, AD220. I guess it's AD200. Good for indoor shoot with Octobox. I think it's absolutely good for indoor shoot. Even a, a flash like this is more than sufficient. But uh, AD200, I think it's the best. It works the best. So you can either use AD200 or use a flash like this. Both works. So in for indoor, you don't need much of a power as compared to outdoor. Outdoor is the place where you are you are fighting powerful ambient lights like sun and things like that. Indoor. Uh, your lighting requirement is actually lesser so any other questions what is the basic number of lights models of light for proper wedding fashion portrait setup i think the entire session was on that probably uh, you'll have a replay uh, have a look at it once again madhuri so i think for me uh, as a candid wedding photographer a ad200 and a v1 is more than sufficient uh, if you need one more light, probably you can buy one more AD200 or I would suggest AD600 because if you are a person, kind of person who is uh, interested in uh, shooting in uh, bright daylights, then that helps. So, Manoj Garodia is updating firmware necessary. Manoj, updating firmware is absolutely necessary. M make sure your camera firmware, your trigger firmware or uh, any other lens or light any firmware is always up to date because if you update one firmware and another is left updated this could result in some mismatches and issues so uh, the firmware update is absolutely necessary so never take a chance when you get a firmware please update it but uh, sometimes okay in some brands okay there could be some bugs and things like that so always read about what is the experience of other people who have updated the firmware and then update your firmware okay most of the brands always make the correction immediately if there are such issues so it shouldn't be a big issue either and in godox i don't think we really faced that kind of issue in the past so i think uh, if godox gives a firmware on their website you can either update on your own or uh, sometimes they conduct workshops and some places service centers way where they update the firm of uh, free so uh, ranjit i think probably you can give uh, uh, more information on that for f shooting with ad200 with umbrella should we must use a reflector dish to avoid light spilling backwards see it all richard praveen richards it all depends on your lighting situation okay for a reception even if the light spills backward it's not an issue okay in reception is a stage where you need light all over but if you're going to do a portrait with the ad 200 and umbrella it's going to be difficult because if the light spills in the back and things like that it can hit a wall and it come in it can come in different directions so if you are looking at a very shadowy contrasty kind of light okay it will spoil that light so that's why uh, for such situations it's better to use modifiers like this like this okay this always helps okay and for me uh, this kind of modifier helps more than a modifier like a mag mod okay i i think that way because the bigger the modifier it always brings softer light uh jahnu bora is AD400 good for harsh sunlight photo shoots? Okay, uh, AD400 is good. It is say you can understand it as a light between AD200 and AD600. If you want to be absolutely sure that you want to fight sunlight, I would say go for AD600 or AD600 Pro. Uh, if if you are little on budget, you are going to say like definitely i'm not going to shoot in mid midday but i need a little bit of power because uh, i'm going to use larger modifiers then you can go for 80 400 but you if you tend to shoot in outdoors in broad daylight i would say safely go for 600 so can i use ad 360 with 
XTT with Nucon Nikon Z6. Okay. XT1, yeah, Nikon trigger is available. AD360, yes, why not? I mean, uh, see, see, within Godox uh, ecosystem, okay, the only thing which changes across cameras is the hot shoe mount, okay, because that's because different cameras have different hot shoe mounts, okay. This is a Panasonic uh, hot shoe, okay, it will not set on a Nikon or Canon, okay. So, your trigger and on camera flash alone may not work across the systems, but all lights, even speed lights, okay, you can trigger with, uh, you can, tr you, you, even if, even if it's a Panasonic uh, speed light, you can, it's actually possible to trigger with a Canon trigger. So, it doesn't matter, okay, that any trigger works with any light. So, that's one uh, advantage. I have SK400 Mark II, but face a problem. Take more time to second flash. See, if you are using, that's what I said. If you are using any flash, okay, okay, be it SK400, any flash for that matter. If you are using it full output continuously, it will take some time for the flash to charge. That's why I'm uh, telling explore your camera, use your high ISO settings as much as possible. Okay. So, uh, uh, see, even at 1600, it's going to give a clean image, most of the cameras. Okay. I'm not asking to go to 1600, at least use 800 ISO. So, that way you bring your stress less on the uh, lights. Okay. So, that way your flash to flash time, recharge time can be reduced. So, how far minimum distance should the light place from the model? Kaushik, as close as possible. Shri Krishna Joshi, can I use AD200 indoors with P120 modifier? Why not? You can happily use. I have used AD200 with P120 modifier indoors. Very much possible. Outdoors, you cannot use because it's a huge modifier and a lot of light is lost within the modifier itself. Rohan Gandhi. The thumb roll say six feet or best results. See, there's nothing like a thumb roll. Okay, Rohan. So the closer you get, the softer the light is. The 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 distant the light is, the harder the light is, and the closer the more light, the distant the light will become lesser. So as long as uh, your your camera field is not obstructed by the light, bring it as close as possible is what I would say. Abhishek Goswami. Yeah. Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you for answering Madhuri. Bharati Raut. Hello, sir. I never used flash before. Can you suggest me what should I what should I need to do to shoot at home? Uh, Bharati, the first thing to uh, do is you have to master the ambient light properly. Okay. Learn to shoot in ambient light, learn to take portraits in ambient light. Once you are a master of ambient light, then you go for a on camera flash with a trigger. Why I'm saying this trigger is you cannot always use an on camera flash for every lighting situation. You might have to uh, try off camera for portraits and stuff like that. So buy a basic modifier like this kind of a modifier with S bracket one speed light like a v860 mark 2 and a trigger start with that okay so that should be less expensive on your uh, budget too and start doing it okay flash will take a little bit of time to uh, learn and become an expert at it takes some time avad yadari fashion and baby shoot equipment see light is the same it's between 8200, 8400 and 8600. So it's about what modifiers you use. Make sure for a baby shoot, it's the light is soft because babies are softer subjects. Most of times you may not need a hard light. So go for a softer light. Okay, for fashion shoot, it's okay. You have to probably use all modifiers. Even if you have all modifiers, you still need more, more modifiers. So. For a fashion shoot, uh, there's no end, like uh, it depends on what kind of shoot your lighting schema. 
so it's very difficult to answer that what's the difference of godox 120 centimeter of uh, octagon uh, godox p90l or p90h i'm confused see p120l is basically the diameter the diameter of the light is 120 mm 90 the diameter of the light is 90 centimeters okay so that's the difference so P, when you when you go for p120l it's a bigger source of light meaning it will absorb more more light but the softer light you will get p90l it could be slightly more contrasty than p120l but you uh, but uh, the thing is the light loss within the modifier will be lesser okay you will get softer light l and h the difference is uh, l is only uh, only to be used with uh, low low heat lights like flash and things like that with h you can mount continuous lights which will emit a little bit of heat so the h designated modifiers will be little heavier than l so if you are only using a flash please buy l which is easier to carry uh, h if you are both using a continuous and uh, flashlight then you can uh, probably go for the h so that's what it is probably um, uh, Ranjit will be able to explain it better. So guys, I think the questions are over, right? Hello, Pradyut. Hello, Radha. Thank you for coming here. So I think the questions are over. So uh, if I have, I guess I have answered all the questions. I think it's more than one and a half hours, more than the allocated time so it says Malik Solanki how to use gels with ad 200 sir direct gels or with uh, grid you can use both with grid and gel gel is for changing the color grid you use because you don't want the light to spread it should be narrow okay so gels are normally used along with grids because if you want to have a hair light in orange and you are uh, directing the light behind that orange should come come should not leak on the face that's why people normally use uh, gels with grids biplap chandra sir see one more problem on sk400 sometimes show light power like 1 2 3 4 that time full light number is 10 don't show okay uh, biplap i didn't understand in sk400 what i understand is it's always something like 1 by 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 4, 1 by 8 and 1 by 16. So those are the powers I have seen. So Ranjit, can you answer Bipla Chandra better? Uh, is there any mode or something to change from uh, the fractional output to 1, 2, 3, 4? Uh, I didn't know. So can you please help Ranjit? I am not aware of that. Uh, I want to hair light. Yeah, Manik, if you have to hair light, uh, what you do is you, you can use either a uh, either a flash like a speed like this like this or ad 200 but uh, mount a gel along with the uh, grid okay uh, uh, ranjit has given a model number where you can put both grid and gel on ad 200 ad 200 or a flash like v860 mark 2 you can use that so you can use any colors then Madhuri Devi tips on what power to use in flash stroke to ensure longevity in events. See, uh, flash I don't use at output above 1 eighth. Maximum is 1 eighth. I try to keep it at 16. I'm talking about speed lights. With AD200, I even go up to 1 by 4 and uh, it's good because it's a bigger light, right? See, the bigger the light, you can explore more. Okay, the smaller the, smaller the light, don't try to overheat it. So that's the thing I'm going to say. Uh, Ranjit, is there any recommendation on uh, what, what is the speed point of power you should use on each of the lights so that the, the flash to flash time is minimal uh, and the light doesn't overheat? Is there anything like that Godox recommends? Please let me know. So Ranjit says ADS11 for gels and grids you can use. And these modifiers are not very expensive and uh, it really helps giving very different pictures. So that's the thing. 
so so any more questions guys any more questions friends any questions hello friends any questions you like to ask so if there's no questions i'd like to close the session So, uh, Madhuri, uh, what gels do you use? I think Ranjit has given a recommendation, so that's what I use. So, uh, best softbox for AD 200, I would say this 60 centimeter uh, softbox, which comes with uh, both the uh, S1 or S2 uh, holder and this 80 centimeter octa umbrella. So both are easy to fold and open and install. So that's what I use. Will V1 go with? Will V1 go with 35 inch softbox? I don't know what is 35 inch softbox, Joy Deep Chowdhury. See, V1 go will go in a S2 kind of flash bracket. So uh, if there is any uh, bounce mount modifier, the bounce mount mo modifier can go in a S2 flash bracket. You can, I think you can also buy a Ellen Chrome uh, mount flash brackets and uh, use their modifiers also. So that's that. I use, I use Godox V860 and Godox 120 centimeter octa. My problem is in outdoor shoot, I face the problem. I can't capture the full body shoot or wide range of pick if the subject and oct octagon is closer, then I have to better results. But if the distance is higher, I cannot see. Uh, Bip Pradeep Das, the problem is you are using a speed light. When you use speed light on a uh, on a modifier like uh, 120 centimeter octa, then much of the light is lost within the modifier itself and it won't hit the subject. And moreover, in outdoors, uh, if a speed light cannot balance out sunlight. So you might have to try more powerful lights like AD200 in AD600 in such situation. At, I would say start with the AD200 and use in morning time so that you can go lighter and uh, you can still achieve results. AD600 will better if it is uh, uh, if it is uh, if it is very heavy sunlight. Yeah, please, uh, Janu Bora, please save the session in your page. Yeah, it will be saved in the page. Uh, Ranjit has given a very good uh, recommendation. So, Sukanya Sundar, hi sir, I have a Canon 600D with uh, Godox AD200 Pro. I keep getting a black line in the picture when I go above 1 by 200 shutter speed. Is it because of the camera or I am doing something wrong? I did a different shutter speed. Sukanya, every camera has something called as a sync speed. Your camera sync speed is probably 1 by 200 of a second. And if you go above 1 by 200, you will get a black bar in between that is very normal okay so that's process of photography so you cannot exceed 1 by 200 if you are going to exceed 1 by 200 then you have to use something called high speed sync so if you use high speed sync that black line you're getting in between will go away i hope i answered sukanya Thank you, uh, Pradeep Das. So I think uh, it's a good time to uh, close my session. So thank you, everyone. 
so it was great meeting you during such a time okay in fact in the last one and a half hours while presenting i totally forgot about corona and things like that i think learning gives a boost teaching gives a boost okay uh, sharing knowledge is something you know it makes uh, people happy it is a happy experience for both the learner and teacher uh, thanks to godox india and nikita distributors for giving me such an opportunity i'm sure they're going to bring more such experts lovely people to teach photography i'm also looking forward to experts uh, the, the lot of experts in uh, godox amb ambassadors and mentors like radha krishnan sir jesse obroy and people like that so neeta shankar so expecting a lot from them so i think uh, godox has planned a lot so keep watching this channel i think lot of uh, interesting stuff are going to happen here so i think uh, uh, it's time to close the session so thanks for thanks all of you for coming to the session So thank you.